So in um, small thyroid cancers, yes. And if the thyroid cancer has not gone to the lymph nodes in general, yes, people will have a very good result. And at five years, their risk of having persistent disease is very low, same at 10 years. And you'll hear us talk a lot about whether patients have persistent disease or not, instead of saying cure, because it tends to be, um, uh, I think, a little bit different definition than, um, than our patients will sometimes think about. If we say cure, it may be that, oh, you don't ever have to see me again or be monitored for this. And so oftentimes we'll say that the, the risk of continuing to have persistent disease is low and you, know, you can follow at, um, at less um, frequent intervals. Patients who have um, disease spread to their lymph nodes at the time of diagnosis and um, or to other um, body structures, lung or bone, um, it will be very unlikely that we will cure that patient, but that does not necessarily mean that their um, risk of dying is going to increase. Certainly with a neck lymph node, um, their risk of dying from their thyroid cancer is, is lower than, say, if they have a uh, bone metastasis. But many of my patients um, are still doing very well many years after their initial diagnosis, and there are more therapies that we can offer now um, if that is the case. Most patients before the diagnosis of thyroid cancer usually have normal thyroid function, but as you said, some may have um, over or underactive thyroid. And once the thyroid comes out, uh, then thyroid hormone replacement is pretty much um, needed for the rest of their life. So it's one pill every single day. The goal of what that therapy will be and where the uh, thyroid function tests need to be on the labs will de be determined by what the pathology is. If the patient doesn't take their medication for many days they will become hypothyroid and and that's um, very uncomfortable for the patient to have um, but there are regular lab um, intervals that will usually check the thyroid function try to keep it in a certain range based on what stage of thyroid cancer they have um, and uh, go from there Some patients after the diagnosis of thyroid cancer will only ever need to just be followed with blood tests. Other patients will need to receive a therapy um, called radioactive iodine where um, they have to follow a very specific protocol of um, certain foods to eat, um, for the first two weeks prior to and the week of therapy. They have to be isolated from family and friends because they're receiving a um, radioactive substance to treat the thyroid cancer. And, um, and there's follow-up scans that'll occur after that. So that can actually be quite complicated for a patient with thyroid cancer and can be actually feel very isolating because they can't be around anybody for about five days and they have to eat a diet that is not um, very typical of a usual American diet and that's that's can be tough to do for about three weeks. The other thing is that not all patients are necessarily going to be cured of their thyroid cancer and they're going to have to be followed long term and I think sometimes there's the misconception that um, it's the quote good cancer to have or the not so bad cancer to have which I think a lot of my patients would say well I wouldn't have chosen to have cancer in any way, shape, or form, be it skin cancer, thyroid cancer, or otherwise. And so um, it's helping us as healthcare providers be sensitive to that issue that um, patients really don't want to have a diagnosis of, uh, diagnosis of cancer, even if it is a treatable cancer. Um, and I think sometimes people will say that to try and reassure patients, but it ends up um, coming perhaps off as a little insensitive to what they may be experiencing. Absolutely, about um, uh, anywhere between five to 10% of patients will die of their thyroid cancer. So it is um, something that um, we still need to keep in mind that though it may be a cancer that's treatable, there is a certain percentage of patients that over time will not respond to radioiodine therapies and will need other medications that can actually um, be quite impactful on their quality of life and um, such as chemotherapy agents that we have now. And those can be very uncomfortable to take, have uncomfortable side effects and um, have um, adverse effects that can happen, such as bleeding on those medications. So it um, is, is treatable, but for some patients, it's um, very, very, uh, very serious. In, at least in the state of California, looking at the California Cancer Registry and with um, OSHPED, which is a discharge uh, database, 
when we were able to fuse that database together, um, have been able to show that the rates of thyroid cancer in Hispanic women and Asian women in um, California are actually much higher um, than their African American and Caucasian counterparts, and that these particular patients may actually um, not do as well um, with their thyroid cancer, may have more likelihood of having a lymph node recurrence or metastasis, and may need more surgeries or more radioactive iodine. So that's an active area of study for our group, trying to identify how we can best care for patients and um, predict things that might put them at increased risk of persistent disease. There, uh, about, I believe it's been two years now, perhaps three, uh, was the first chemotherapy agent that was approved for thyroid cancer. And there is a, another one that um, I believe has just recently gone through its approval process. So that in and of itself is um, really um, impactful because prior to that, we just had radioactive iodine and when that didn't work anymore, it was, well, we're not quite sure. And so these medications can um, really improve or decrease the, the rate of progression of thyroid cancer. There's not been a trial long enough to show that there's a survival benefit for these medications yet, but we can definitely look at progression-free survival and see that there actually has been a benefit there. So my hope is that there will be more things um, in the future that will continue in that vein and um, that the next generation of thyroid cancer researchers is very interested in uh, moving in that direction.